So welcome. Uh, it's absolutely delightful to welcome Javier and Cathy here this afternoon. And you are Educar Nos Transforma. Now, um, that's appalling, appalling pronunciation, so I do apologise for that. Um, you are based over in, um, in uh, South America, aren't you? In Mexico. In Mexico. In Mexico. Central yes. America. Central yes. America. So um, I, I'm lucky I've got, I get to read all the nominations and I have your nomination in front of me. And um, I'm just gonna read a bit of it out to you if I may. So it says, I am nominating Educar Nos Transformer for this award because of their amazing combination of NLP and neurosemantics in their program, Bullying Tickles Me. Their program effectively addresses and helps eradicate the pervasive and damaging generational problem of bullying in our school systems and society at large. I mean, that's incredibly impressive in itself. So do tell me a little bit more about this and the work that you've done that's led to this nomination. Okay, well, um, we have, uh, I, I'm North American by origin but I've lived in Mexico for 52 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and and uh, we have worked in the social sector our entire lives, um, <clears throat> working with uh, indigenous people in Southern Mexico uh, when we started out with uh, urban marginalized communities in Mexico City right. and uh, in rural communities and other places doing community development work and other uh, kinds of things, but mostly focused on education. Both of us are um, educators, so. Yes, in particular, not, not uh, education in schools, mm. in particularly, but uh, education with people, whatever they live, in, if they live in, in the country or they live in the cities or whatever, we, we, we have been involved in many of those. And the challenge was how we can create methodologies that are appropriate to the purposes that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And in that case, when, when we would be speaking about uh, bullying tickles me, that's what we created, was precisely because our experience in daily life conditions, as well as in the schools, was that where a lot of people getting bull, bullying, mm -hmm. bullied. Mm -hmm. And we uh -huh. said, wow. Uh, for instance, for giving you an example, mm -hmm. the. Um, yeah, the World Health Organization in 2013 declared that more than a million people died in that year mm -hmm. from the effects of bullying. And of course, it's uh, much worse. Uh, well, it's among children. Certainly, it's yeah. a it's a pervasive behavior that uh, is reflected throughout society yes. and and affirms a culture of violence. But it's really important then to deal to work with children to yeah. prevent it and try yeah. to eradicate it because yeah. it's repeated in so many places in society. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. and and understanding that that you're starting if you start with them in the education system you've given that you've empowered them and you've given them those tools that they can take forward in life haven't you yes precisely yes, precisely, precisely. <laughs> and as you and as you start speaking to uh, to the, 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 the our work we said about nlp as well as uh, neurosemantic mm. and we knew we knew because we have been practicing for years that we were practicing that. And we were, th we were thinking what we can do about the bullying. Yeah. If we know that we, we have those tools, how we can create a special tool for that purpose. Yeah. And that's why, that's why it took us, uh, I could say like a few years to create, to create that. Uh, but this creation is, not uh, it's not a book that you need to read and it's I know by heart. Mm. It's not that that we know by heart. Our hearts work for create the system, the, the, the new system. And it's based on the con concept of that the uh, the way that uh, bullying works is a toxic system. Yes. Yeah. 
Definitely. It's in, and we began by a- analyzing bullying and right. saw that it is a toxic system with different players yes. and all of whom play, play an important part. For example, a lot of times uh, we never give credit to the person, the, to the children who are observers, but in fact, observers to an act of violence or mistreatment, psychological, verbal, or physical, um, and the observers empower the person because they, they silence uh, let let it go on. Yes. And, yeah. And yeah. many times because they're afraid they'd be the next victim. I mean, there are a lot of other things that play in, but it's a system that is very uh, toxic mm-hmm. and needs to be dealt with uh, in order to to change society. And it's so important to do it with children. It's like oh. a circle. It's like a circle like this, in which this circle is created by the observers. Those mm-hmm. are the keepers of the situation. Mm-hmm. And the ones who are in the middle are the bully. The bully. The bully. Uh-huh. And, the, and the victim. And the victim. And yeah. the, those both are going to be working, but if they are covered by the mm-hmm. observers. Mm-hmm. And then when you break the observer circles, that is not easy. And it start becoming uh, difficult for them. But for that thing happens, we thought how we can create that new situations that break broke uh, all those elements that are the bacteria of that dimension. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what well, what it is is find a way to and and we we found that with NLP and neurosemantics mm-hmm. we had perfect tools to be able to work with this. For example, the four pillars of the program are power zones, which uh, empower the children to uh, be responsible for what they think, what they say, what they do, and how they choose. Mm. But it makes the children responsible themselves instead of uh, the, the system prior to our understanding of it now, yeah. uh, often brought in the adults to solve the problem. But yeah. it's not a problem that should be solved by the adults. It should be solved by teaching the children to empower themselves. Yeah. So power zones. The other thing we focus on, the, the second pillar is um, personal, personal boundaries. boundaries. What right. I'm responsible yes. for and what others are responsible yes. for. Mine and not mine. Yes. And, uh, the third is unconditional self-esteem. As you know, neurosemantics uh, teaches us that my self-esteem has nothing to do with what I have or what I can do. Mm -hmm. It has to do with who I am. And Mm -hmm. that is unconditionally sacred and to be respected and trusted. So that's the the third pillar. And then of course, the fourth is teaching children to be empathetic, to understand and to feel and to be able to accompany what others are thinking and feeling and doing. So and for easy. that, we have exercises, exercises that goes to the mind, mm-hmm. from, to the muscle, from the mind, from the yes. mind to the muscle, which means is not only to understand, we understand very a lot of things in which we are without power, we are powerless. Yes. And what, is, what is the good of that? And then we needed tools for having empowered the kids in yes. these four dimensions that Kathy mentioned as a pillars. Yes. How you can stand a chair or a table without a pillar, you can't. How you mm-hmm. can stand a kid without the pillars, you can't. We make sure that those four pillars are in place. That's and, I, why. and I have to say, um, Javier and Kathy, uh, I, I was watching the video that was, um, that was provided as part of the, um, the supporting evidence for your nomination. And um, thankfully, uh, there were subtitles in English, um, uh-huh. and, and which and it was beautiful. And I just want to—I I, I wrote down um, the, part of the part of the um, video was a, a young lady, young girl being um, being interviewed and asked certain questions. Um, I have no idea how old she is, but she probably is around ten or eleven years old. I yes, would guess. Yes, yes, yes. Um, delightful young lady, and uh, she was asked what would you do in a bullying situation? And her response was, I would use my personal powers to feel, to speak, to act, 
to think and to decide. That's and I thought right. how beautiful that, that that young lady has that embedded already at, at, at the age of 10 or 11 years old. And, and that was one of the testimonies for the work that you're doing. Um, so bearing that in mind, when you hear things like that, what does it mean to you to be nominated for this award? Wow. Well, it's, we're really delighted, excited, and, and very grateful because uh, it has been a lot, of, a, a lot of work. It's been, it's a, a, it's a new way, and we think it really can change, make strong societal change, if we can get it into enough schools and get it circulated and, and used. Of course, the pandemic has not helped us <laughs> to no. expand it because. Uh, schools are still suspended for the most part in oh, most are they? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> in Mexico there's they're just barely beginning to come back to going to school during mm. the day it's been virtual for uh, almost two years or a year yes, and a half yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's been that part of it has been hard but for us it's it's wonderful because it also we think will give us a, a, a way to be in touch with more people for more people to know about it yeah. and possibly begin to use it. Yeah. yeah. So we're really delighted, excited, very happy and grateful for yes, this nomination. Yes, grateful, grateful. Mm -hmm. Because grateful means that we have we we have receiving grace. Then mm -hmm. what we are we are giving something, but we are receiving more. We are receiving the grace which is the grace to be heard, to be understood, and to be sharing. That's the most powerful thing. Speaking with you, Karen, right now gives us emotion. We are thinking how we are going to be connected with another colleagues from the world, expanding these kind of things that are going to be for the good of humanity, okay. changing the attitudes, changing the in a good manner, because if we go without tools we can't go yeah. and then having making sure that we have the great to the appropriate tools is the best way of going and of Absolutely. course too, the, the way that we do it because humans in general but certainly children learn the best when they play yes and so so we have uh, the whole program is constructed around mm -hmm. uh, fun activities and play uh, that children can get involved in and they learn like they learn their power zone by walking around with a hula hoop and not getting into anybody else's space or different kinds of things like that that then and, and teaching like there's a, a a way we teach children to uh, one be blindfolded and and another take the person around being careful and que take it you know so that they don't get hurt or bumped or anything yeah so we do lots of fun exercises with the kids and games so that, that they learn through fun and through yeah. play. That's, and so, it, that's so key, isn't it? If it is true, which is true, that Einstein said that the most powerful tool that we have is imagination, mm -hmm. that's what we do. Play with the imagination. Yeah. And the imagination empowers. But not only that. The way of playing the imagination is creating new levels of meaning. Awareness. Awareness. Yes. Awareness and giving meaning, a new meaning, a new meaning in a neurosemantic. And we say the highest level of the meaning that you give it is the more powerful that your behaviors, your actions, yes. your beliefs are going to go acting and influencing lives. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So, what one thing um, in your work do you think is making the biggest difference? One thing? <clears throat> what would be the one thing? Well, I, I think it's the use of the, what we've learned. Javier's a, a trainer in, in both neurosemantics and, 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 and NPL. And I'm a meta coach in neurosemantics and a master practitioner in uh, NL, NLP. And uh, I sometimes turn it around because in Spanish it's in Spanish, NL, yeah, and in English it's yeah. NLP, so and anyway. French the same, right? <laughs> yeah. 
But I think having those tools has what is what has made the difference because yeah. it gave us a way to uh, to address this problem and to do it in a in a more effective way than we've seen anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, for me, there, there is uh, uh, following what Kathy says uh, is that seems that we are playing to magic. Oh. Yes. You, let me tell you why. With magic. Be, with magic. Why? Because some the, the point, the key point is when you arrive to a certain level of awareness in which the people says, wow, and then, wow, it comes a change. And that moment, we're not waiting for our days at all. It's right now yeah. and right there. This is the magic. It's not a magic by, by magicians, but it's the magic of the mind. Yes. It's the magic of the heart, yes. right? of consciousness. Then yes. The key point is consciousness. And then when we do that with a person, this is fantastic. But when you do that with a group, it's amazing. And when you do that with a larger group, this, wow. <laughs> and, the kids, and the kids are, are and the kids. so. And the, and the more important thing that brings you more emotion is when the kids are aware and they start leading you. Yeah. They start leading you. They change you the roles. You don't lead them because they say, no, now we know this and this, that, and then we are going to do that because that lead me to that. And then, then even giving you uh, like orders to <laughs> act, to act, and they evaluate your performance. Wow, that's great. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So where would you like to see NLP and neurosemantics and particularly your work in the future? Well, we'd like to see it in lots of different places because we see this not as just, I mean, Mexico has uh, 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 is very high in bullying, you know, has bad, has a bad reputation and a bad, <laughs> has earned it. There's a lot of violence and a lot of bullying. So it's not, but it's not just Mexico. Mm -hmm. We think this is a worldwide program or a worldwide problem yeah. that, needs, that needs to be attended if we have any hope of changing toward a culture of peace and harmony and respect and trust. Yeah. And that's yeah. what, that was what we're about by trying to get kids to be aware of how they can interact more effectively and uh, properly, respectfully, trustfully, and uh, empathetically with others, because yeah. that's really what's going to change things. And that's starting true. with kids is very important for well, us. I want to give you three examples. Yeah. One is an example that the relations that we already have, and we have been becoming really friends, friends of the, of the soul with the South African organization with uh, perception and motion. The perception and oh, motion. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's in, it's unbelievable. It's like uh, if we have been living there for years, and we, <laughs> and we are offering to them frijoles and tortillas Mexican for because the empathetic relationships that we are having and yeah. the way that we came uh, doing so. That's a, that's an example, like enlarging. Yes. Another example is that. Uh, the organ an organization that uh, uh, fights the violence in the schools mm -hmm. as a, as a worldwide organization invite us to present bullying tickles me as an example mm -hmm. and then we expand that relationship with the worldwide and we had a presentation with them it was, it was the eighth congress of um of uh, schools against school violence Yes. And it was last uh, last year in here. It was to be held in Puerto Vallarta, which is a beach place here in Mexico. Right. Of course, with the pandemic, it was done yes. virtually. But we presented um, uh, in in this Eighth Congress against school violence, yes. and uh, and we've also had some other opportunities to uh, train other people and teach other people about it. But uh, the pandemic has certainly blocked a lot of things that we hope to be able to start doing already to get yeah. into more schools. Um, the third example is that we had, uh, there was a fifth Congress of the um, particular private schools. Private schools. Right. And they were 
2,000 schools representatives. And we were presenting there that. And we have a lot of people coming and following us because they say, we want that, we want that. And then, but because of the pandemic, we couldn't. Yeah. But your question was, what do we think? We imagine, we want, do desire. We are working for expanding this around the world. Yeah. Not only as our own thing, but sharing, owning, uh, embracing others to have this kind of vision and extending. And it's very important. That's why your question at the beginning is, what emotion brings us to be at this platform on NLP? This because this is a fraternal, uh, yeah. our sisters and brothers with whom we can share and expand it. Yeah. We started this program, obviously, in Spanish. And I'll show you, we have, um, we have it done. This is the, the basic manual called okay. Me. And yes. It's, uh, it's about 125 pages, but it's like the overall explanation of how the system works mm -hmm. and, and uh, teaching how to teach the power zones. And it has all of the games and activities. And then I have translated it into English. Oh, so brilliant. We have it in English. And we also have generated six teachers uh, manuals for grades one through six is is what I'm would so be sorry. primary elementary yeah. school here in Mexico. So we have that in Spanish and in English Brilliant. and uh, to facilitate because it, it takes it from this is the basic manual, but we have specific ones for each year for the teachers of each right. year so that that it so it's age specific. Age, age appropriate, yeah. psychologically appropriate yeah. uh, materials to be used all the way through elementary school. Something oh, that gives sick. us a lot of a lot of emotion, uh, which is how you can prepare professionally uh, something. For instance, is this? This is a table of the elements. Yes. <laughs> of, in which you, this is the elements. The that power zone, power zone the, uh, frontier personal, personal uh, self-esteem and empathy. And you have this, uh, uh, como, how do you say like this? It's a table that says, what are the, appro what are the uh, behaviors that we're trying to promote and right. teach children in each And of then those. each one of them have seven behaviors. And then by the end, you have 28, 28 behaves yeah. that yeah. change yeah. the culture. Change the cultures individually and, and, and communitarily. Take it yeah. through. That's wow. that's beautiful. I think what you're doing and and to want that to go worldwide is is such and, a brilliant aspiration. And of course, it has to be adjusted culturally. Yes. Places where we go. No, we when we talked to Tabiso in South Africa, South he Africa. was very interested in it. But we said, you know, the pictures and the images that we have here. Are, are not appropriate for South Africa. Yeah. You need to, you're gonna need to make this um, image appropriate for black people in South Africa. Yes. Uh, because this is more like uh, brownish white people in, <laughs> in Mexico <laughs> who are fe featured in the pictures. And Absolutely. The Absolutely. And, uh -huh. But it is an opportunity to exchange uh, capacities in wisdom uh, for instance, speaking with Tabis or so, he says, don't, don't worry, brother. You're not Tabis or how is. Don't worry, brother. What are you going to be in charge of all that? <laughs> oh, yes, Tabiso. Tabiso is amazing too. But thank you, Javier and Kathy, um, for giving us such an amazing insight into, um, into what you do. Uh, and as I may have mentioned at the beginning, uh, you are finalist in the education and research category of the um, 2022 NLP Awards. Uh, so we will be hosting a virtual live event or live virtual event um, on the 13th of May where the winners will be announced. So thank you again for the amazing work that you are doing over there in Mexico and radiating it out um, throughout the world. So thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank Karen, you very for much, Karen. Lovely interview. It's been wonderful to interact and, and hear your impressions of what you've seen so far and to find such a welcoming, kind, um, receptive 
person on the other end of this interview. Yes, <laughs> so. the, the perception and sensibility that you have for this means that uh, it's really something that moves us. It's, it's a tool of interaction among us. And you already are giving us that opportunity to interconnect with you. Thanks a oh, lot, Karen. You are very welcome. Thank you.